quite extraordinary because exactly how loud that was is the reason why this guitar was invented. And this guitar has an English soul. Does it? Perhaps you didn't know that. Didn't know that. This guitar shape was invented in 1931 for country musicians to play acoustically so they could be heard in the back. Yeah. And because C.F. Martin III was a fan of British history and it was the biggest guitar they ever made, they named it after the biggest yes. class of British battleships used in World War I, the Dreadnought. I, I, do you know, I didn't realize that that was a, a, a an, I didn't realize that the English were the only ones to use the, the word Dreadnought, but I knew it was named after a battleship. So what? Yes, Her well, Majesty's the, the Dreadnought, the Fear Nothing. Well, welcome to the video uh, that we're going to shoot uh, with Diane from Martin here. Live at Lee's house. Yeah, actually at my house, because um, we're going to do all of the sound here on just the, the camera mics. And um, I didn't want to use the warehouse because it's pretty noisy in our warehouse. And it's great that we've started with this guitar here, because that's my own um, Martin D35, which I acquired earlier this year mm. um, for my 40th birthday present, because that guitar is exactly the same age as me, um, probably in slightly better shape than I am. It certainly <laughs> sounds better than I do. Uh, so anyway, we've got Diane from Martin here and Paul, who's our guitar department manager. And we just thought we'd have an informal chat about Martin and perhaps learn a few things and hear some guitars. And So how long are you over in the UK for? Um, just a week. I'm on a seven week tear through Europe. Seven weeks? Mm. No one will remember what you look like when you get home, will they? That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, you had asked me before, Lee, mm -hmm. if, um, if we have any environmental or ecological concerns. Yes. And I was very excited to tell you something about your very own guitar. Okay. That would answer the question. Paul, would you show everybody the back of that guitar? A D35, the D stands for Dreadnought. 35 is a nomenclature, is a number that refers to the fact that this has a three-piece back. Okay. Why does it have a three-piece back? So, so back? any Martin guitar that is a 30-something or other is it's a, a three-piece back. Oh, a 35. Or a 36. Okay. Okay? Now, the reason why it has a three-piece back was in 1965. Martin guitar was throwing away sets of Brazilian rosewood, <laughs> which in 1969 became endangered, because there was a little bit of cosmetic blemish in the seam. All our wood is quarter sawn, which is a very laborious way of cutting wood so that we can book match the grain. And that's for tonal properties, but also th so that'll last longer than you. Mm -hmm. Which is this, is, this is just with you now. Now, so in 1965, some guy was in the dumpster doing one of these, you know? Somebody said, what are you gonna do? He goes, I'm gonna make a guitar, I'm gonna cut away the part that's not cosmetically perfect, yeah. and I'm gonna create a conscious dreadnought. In 1965, the D35 wow. was actually invented as our first environmentally conscious guitar. I didn't know that, but I feel better now about buying it. There's another reason why this is a spectacular instrument. Because yeah. of its three-piece back, and because the triangle is the most rigid shape in geometry, the bracing pattern on a D35 differs from a D28, which has a two-piece back, because the braces on the three-piece back, D35, because of the triangle, they thought, gee, the triangle's so rigid, we'll make these braces a little thinner. Mm -hmm. And because of that, this guitar resembles the sound of a cannon. <laughs> Well, and that was kind of what I was hoping we'd probably do in this video, is talk a little bit about some of the famous shapes that are in the Martin sort of range, you know, what's, you know, why Dreadnought, why well, Triple O, it, I mean, it's OM, a, it's know, a great thing to talk about because, um, you know, of course, as compared to English history, which I, <laughs> I have a lot of respect for, um, we're a young country, but we're very proud of the fact that Martin has been making guitars one family by hand since 1833. So next year will be 180 years, one family making guitars by hand in America. Um, when he first emigrated, of course the guitars bear no resemblance to what we know. They were very small mm -hmm. and they were gut-stringed instruments yeah. that had very rarely more than 12 frets. Um, and most of the players were women. Some of the design changes that C.F. Martin instituted, um, the most prominent one was the way he developed a very particular kind of bracing the top of a guitar. Now, first of all, why is that important? The top of an acoustic guitar is its voice, its speaker cone. 
but because you have the strings pulling on it, you must brace the underside of the top of an acoustic guitar in such a way that it'll vibrate madly, but never fall apart. And the way he learned from his mentor, Johann Stauffer in Vienna, was fan bracing. If you look under a classical guitar, it fans mm -hmm. out from the bottom of the bridge. In 1850, when the guitars were very small, for some reason nobody knows, C.F. Martin changed the bracing pattern to an X-brace. That's 162 years ago. Literally, Lee, every single acoustic guitar yeah. maker in the world copies X-bracing. I, I had a customer of mine bring in um, a parlor guitar. Yes. About earlier on this year. And again, a, a 200 or 300 year old parlor guitar that he'd had, um, I don't know if he'd had it rebraced, but he'd certainly had it reinforced and restrung for steel string. Uh -huh. He and would was, have to have it rebraced. Yeah, and it was all tuned an octave above, still a six string, but all tuned an octave above yeah. a normal treadmill. It sounded amazing. Well, it's interesting that you brought up the parlor guitar. Paul mm. and I were talking about this earlier. They're called parlor guitars because they were played predominantly by women yeah. in the parlor. <laughs> so from 1850 till the early 1920s, 90% 90 of guitar players were women. Yeah. A complete demographic flip to today. Why and can't that be like that nowadays? You Listen, you'd never have this. That's true. I don't think. Because women were playing these gut string little you know, 10, 12 fret parlor instruments with a slotted headstock. And it wasn't until the 1920s that a famous banjo player yeah. asked Martin to make a steel string guitar that would, because he wanted a guitar that would play like a banjo, because everybody was only listening to banjo and mandolin music. Yeah, because you that, still hear the parlor guitar. No way. Yeah. So that was the impetus for the first 14 fret steel string guitar to be a standard the Martin orchestra model. So that was, the, the orchestra OM, was before Dreadnought. And that, and, oh yes, mm -hmm. the OM was designed in 1929. Mm -hmm. for this fam famous banjo player. And that's why it's called an OM. It doesn't mean you should go meditate. It's an <laughs> orchestra model. It was the first 14 fret steel string guitar to be played with the banjo and mandolin orchestra. And, and do you think the reason it's smaller is because perhaps they just, they were, they were, it was closer to that parlor sort of Lee, size. It wasn't such a In 1929, step. Yeah. this was like a mariachi guitar. Oh, it was massive, was, was it? Huge, compared to... Massive, loud, balanced. We call this a small body guitar now, it was huge. What's really remarkable is both the orchestra model and the dreadnought are not copies of anything. No, of course. This is not a copy of anything, either Let, is that. Let's hear Paul play the, um, the OM. Because I must admit, that is a super, super sounding guitar, isn't it? This one, yes. Yeah. And this is brand new right out of the box. It doesn't have a 40 year advantage, <laughs> which is so, quite remarkable. Well, I'll do some strumming on it because you can use obviously these guitars for either strumming or finger picking. So if I strum something similar to what I was doing on, on Leeds Martin. <laughs> Finger-picking wise, it's like stunning. Should be noted, same woods. Right. Completely different size. This predates 1929, then the Depression. Had a hard time staying in business. Lee. Yes. You don't know this. I don't know this. But during the Depression, we made more of these things than we did guitars. Really? Yes. Um, Americans were going to cruise ships uh, and bringing back these dancing fleas. That's what ukulele <laughs> means in Hawaiian. And C.F. Martin III looked at me and said, we can make these. These are just little guitars with a dovetail and X bracing. I mean, they were incredibly well made. And some of those are worth hundreds of thousands oh, really? of dollars. The original ones in mm -hmm. the 30s. Now this is very interesting sociologically, another thing we spoke about. The last time the ukulele had a boom was the Great Depression, and now again. Why? Because it is the happiest instrument in the world, you know? <laughs> really, and we're making them now talk about environmentally conscious. The X-Series, and this is um, an example of that, um, is 
our sausage guitar. This is all our reconstituted wood products. Oh, that's, okay, fine. <laughs> I was thinking, where's this going? A sausage guitar. This is all the bits and pieces yeah. of the wood that have been compressed. Yeah. Um, uh, there's, uh, of course, um, Stratabon, which is layers of wood glued together. We make guitars with this. These are, the, the sound is quite remarkable. We were both remarkable on the sound. And of course, we make you know solid koa ones as well. Yeah. But this is a really resilient and. Um, Which been a crazy. I know when probably about two or three years ago when the uke boom sort of restarted, and I know um, we had to adjust our industry's sales figures because the annual reports come through, and, and and it came through in like 2010 or something. All of a sudden, we'd sold. This is just the UK. Had sold like. 150,000 more guitars than the year before. And someone's going, this can't be right, this can't be right. And it was all the like $29 ukuleles that you get in the supermarket type thing had all been lumped into this guitar category. In the fretted instrument. Yeah, category. and so it's all of a sudden, but it was just from nowhere all of a sudden. So we took a slightly different view. We didn't want to do the, the sort of like the toy ukuleles. So we, we It is a real stopped. instrument. Yeah. I mean, Martin makes um, ukuleles for upwards of 5,000 pounds right yeah. now. Yeah. But this is a, to me, this is a... Um, what, what's a so what's a, what sort of money would that sell for in the UK? About... About 400. Yeah. I so have we, my colleague here giving me the prices. Yeah. So we've got, we can, I mean, we've got proper solid wood acoustic guitar ukuleles that probably sell from 50 or 60 pounds. Well, let me put it this way. 400. I mean, I, I needed another ukulele like a fish needs a bicycle, but at a trade show, <laughs> I picked up a Martin 3K uke. It doesn't matter what the model number was. It was made out of indigenous American red cherry. Oh, it was so beautiful. And I, I picked that up, I go, this is really nice. You know, I was looking at it and I strummed it and I was like, I'm having this. I'm having so this. So you have a $3,000 uke. $2,000 for a ukulele. And this is, but you know, when you hear it and you record with it mm. and you have fun with it, it's it's a dream. So those people who are going to stick with the ukulele will, will advance in their playing. Mm. Just like guitar, you know, nobody starts on a Martin guitar. Most people start on a GLO. You know what that is? No. Guitar looking object. You know? <laughs> but if you stick with it, you definitely will appreciate mm. the one thing that we have ev that everybody recognizes a very identifiable tone. Yeah. We own the tone. This is, you know, every guitar maker has a voice, and the voice of a Martin guitar is very inspiring. Yeah. I felt, I felt that just listening to Paul play. It's a very musical. The, the the notes are intertwining together in a very musical way and it's not I don't know it's, it's hard to describe isn't it because it's not it's not six individual strings it's the sum of of all of that's the vibrations that's coming off I always um, saw it as a as a portable and private mm -hmm. orchestra that vibrates against your body so, so, the, kind of nice so the OM which is also you were saying earlier is sometimes you see the model number as triple O or OM right. and that's basically that size is it the triple O and by the way for anybody who has some confusion about letters numbers the letter that is the first thing you hear the letter stands for the size so yeah. D is always dreadnought OM is the orchestra model a triple O for example um, there's uh, Eric Clapton right above my head not him himself but um, his model. Well, like he was in the store recently. He's played yes, that. I've heard about that. He's played, He's played that actual, actual one, has he? Guitar. Yeah. I, was, I was really reluctant yesterday. Um, we had to change all the strings, and I didn't want to change the strings. But you did say because <laughs> Eric has played that actual guitar. Awesome. The, yeah. the triple O and the orchestra yeah. model have the same exact body shape and size. What yeah. differs, the orchestra model is slightly wider at the nut, um, that's down there mm -hmm. and over here, and the scale length is a little longer, okay. which is, as Paul artfully brought out, this is actually a more, I guess, preferred guitar for some finger stylists. Mm -hmm. You know, notably someone like you know Lawrence Juber loves yeah. an orchestra model. John Mayer loves an orchestra yeah. model. Um, in fact, there's a signature John, John Mayer. Mayer. But the Eric which Clapton, sold, which we just sold this morning, yeah. yes. So there we are. The okay. Eric Clapton is a very special signature model because, of course, it's designed to be almost exactly like his 1937 Triple O 28 that he played on MTV. Right. Which you know. Oh, the the unplugged. made the yes, yeah. which made yeah. the acoustic guitar cool again. Didn't it? I know, you crazy. Know? 
Now we're also, you know, I, I was mentioning um, that we use this high pressure laminate. Mm -hmm. I want to talk a little bit about that guitar. Well, let's, let's get that one down. This guitar is a um, uh, an example of the latest thing that Martin has been very um, committed to, and that is trying to design a modern acoustic electric. Um, the Dreadnought, which has, of course, been in in fashion for over 75 years. Mm -hmm. Some some would view it as your grandfather's guitar. Well, it is your grandfather's guitar. The tone is amazing, but there are some players who want something with a cutaway and pickup mm. and something with a more comfortable neck. The Performing Artist Series seeks to deliver to that player yeah. great tone yeah. at all the different affordable price levels with all the same features. Um, what if we thin bring neck. A we bought a five, so this is the most affordable one, isn't it? Exactly. So the back and sides are high pressure laminate. Yeah. Uh, the neck is made from Stratabon, like my ukulele, mm -hmm. these two things. But the neck shape differs greatly from your Dreadnought, Lee, because it's a tapered neck. So it's okay. got a, a, the thinness here is the same there. Plus, the cutaway is actually gives deeper access mm. than any other cutaway in the industry. The strap button and the end pin, are, um, end pin jack are separated. And um, if you strum that, Paul, that would be great because... <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't sound like an alternative material, and that is because the most important aspect of any acoustic guitar yeah. is the top yeah. and how it's braced. And is that using your X bracing as well? Yes, this has a uh, an X. Actually, this guitar, believe it or not, is also features uh, a, a very expensive feature that was normally only available on vintage guitars. It's scallop braced. Mm -hmm. It's scallop braced from here down. And features an A-frame configuration. Let's just tell people because it, again, even I've been selling guitars for okay. 20 years, but you don't get to see the inside of one very often. Exactly. So what, what is the difference okay. between scalloped okay. and not scalloped? There are four proprietary bracing patterns in a Martin guitar, and the standard series, which would be number 18 and above, um, which feature a dovetail joint and a nitrocellulose lacquer finish. What you have is standard X bracing. You have your hand carved spruce mm -hmm. brace. These are all hand carved and hand glued. I said it just. Let's go really, really basic. Why would you even brace a top? Well, what happens is, you'll recall that it's critical for the voice of a guitar. The acoustic guitar, the most important part is the top. The top is the mm -hmm. speaker cone of the instrument. It must vibrate wildly to create a voice. Mm -hmm. However, you want to talk about stress, strings pulling mm -hmm. on it 24-7. So you yeah. must brace the underside of the tongue. So there's that, always that balance between rigidity and the robustness to make it last a long time. Absolutely. If you, if you brace it really well, yeah. it'll sound like a GLO forever. Yeah. Um, if you underbrace it, it'll sound great for about 10 minutes before you know, <laughs> it explodes. Now there is a, a, a particular feature, it's sort of like turbocharging your car, where on selected models we do something called scallop the braces, and that means a couple of women at the factory carve away the center portion of these tone bars, the center portion of this X, creating this, yeah. and that allows the top to kind of go bananas. So that, that just allows it to just move a little bit more, but exactly. still, still it's still retains more flexible it. flexible and it takes the weight out of the mm. top, doesn't it? Exactly. Yeah. Mm. And this is the difference between uh, a D28 yeah. and an HD28. The HD28 has that herringbone trim yes. on the top, but the real magic of it is the scallop bracing. So what me, did I have? I have scallop bracing on this. You don't have scallop I've bracing. But you have, bracing you have standard X bracing, but remember, your braces are a little thinner because of the triangular you said back. That, yes. Which is why that it, is. Is, a that not, is that not a very similar kind of? Is that, does that not make it like scalloped bracing to have sort of just thinner bracing, same sort of tonal difference? In some ways, um, your guitar will be louder than any other dreadnought because of that mm -hmm. thinner brace. Um, there's something else we do called forward shifting, which um, the whole thing is moved closer to the sound hole. That's on the orchestra model. Because that... That orchestra model has mm. forward shifted scallop bracing. I, I, so that's like turbo, turbo, yeah. turbo. <laughs> I, I must admit, I, I was really surprised and kind of kicked myself because for a long time, long, long time, you know, I should be a bit embarrassed about this because I've made a living out of selling guitars for a long time, but for a long time, I just thought big is powerful, volume, strumming, and actually the kind of the parlor size guitars were 
a little bit weedy kind wussies. of sounding. Not really wussies, <laughs> but I just didn't. I, I, I kind of ignored them because in my head, I just thought they just won't sound that great. Robust. And actually, when you hear, you know, whether it's... I've played recently some 14 fret models, some 12 fret models, some smaller ones. It's... I, my opinion has completely changed now. It's, it's a different <coughs> voice, but it's absolutely not... Uh, a less there's no less about it you know it's, mm. it's, there's there's plenty there it's just differently voiced so luckily the, the three determining factors in the, in the sound of a guitar mm. are how you brace the top how you connect the neck to the body and mm -hmm. the finish these so are and you know more so than yeah. the size of the guitar absolutely okay. I mean the size will will the size has an effect on the volume mm -hmm. um, the tone has is predominantly because of the Materials you would use on the back and sides mm -hmm. to color it. A rosewood guitar will f sound much more bassy than a mm. mahogany back and sides. But those three things, the way you brace the top, the way you connect the neck to the body, and the finish, have such a huge impact on the sound. Do you want to, let's hear a little bit more about that, but then I do want, yeah. uh, let's come back to that, um, the neck join thing. That's a really good time, I think, to talk about. Because your neck join, again, is quite different to how your big competitor rival kind of manufacturer makes acoustic guitar. Well here's the, so. um, this guitar has a, um, a wonderful um, playing feature beyond the, the, the comfortable neck and the, and the really deep cutaway and that is it's got a, a Fishman analog package here and um, this is great for an acoustic electric player. Um, it, it features, here's obviously when you plug it in, here's the volume. If you press this down uh, you get the tuner and the tuner works whether it's plugged in or not, of course. Here you have a phase button, which is a really helpful mm -hmm. aspect, and a, a rolling EQ. Really simple, really consistent, and actually, because this is very stable and, and doesn't go like this like real wood, it actually works better with a pickup. Yeah. So this is a, a really modern Martin acoustic electric that is available for under 800 pounds. Mm. That's and pretty impressive. Different. There's three different shapes that it run is. all through the Grand Performing Series. Isn't it? That's so if, right. If you like, if you like there's the idea this shape. Of this, yeah. What do you call this shape? This is a Grand Performance. Grand Performance. The yeah. Performing Artist Series has three basic shapes. This shape, an orchestra model, which is like this, with, a, with also a with the fast mm -hmm. neck cutaway, same appointment, same analog package, mm -hmm. and of course a dreadnought. Mm -hmm. Of course a dreadnought. This shape. So let's hear, let's hear a little bit of this. As well, isn't it? the Absolutely. Yeah. They're all cutaways. So, okay. So, some strumming. really cool so this goes all the way up you can get this now with a solid back and sides and a satin finish with the analog package or the number one series of mm -hmm. the performing artist has all the bells and whistles gorgeous the usual suspects rosewood ebony spruce yeah. mahogany gloss finish gorgeous inlays but a digital package and the digital package is a 24-bit signal processor yeah. that has the sound of that guitar, not a generic sound, that guitar recorded on world-class microphones. Yeah. The sound of that guitar through a Neumann U87, through an AKG C414. I mean, you'd spend 120 grand trying to get the microphone. <laughs> um, plus compression, plus anti-feedback, yeah. plus phase, plus tuner, plus incredible options to do the EQ, and it remembers the EQ on those particular mic yeah. images. Yeah. And a pickup to blend. I mean, it, I mean, I, I was telling you, I have a wood-burning VCR at home. I mean, like, to me, that's like, man, that's, that's a lot of technology, but the result is phenomenal. Well, I think that's been, that is the, the, the 
the biggest problem I've always found with the acoustic guitars with the piazza pickup on there is that if you're going to go and play them live they sound like this well you can put a bit of bass in back yeah. and you've got a big pair of PA speakers or whatever it, it, it kind of comes back in a little bit and if it's in a band mix it's close enough it's fine but if you're going to record it or if you're a solo Microphone. artist or something like that you have to mic it and there have been it's quite nice there are one or two products on the market now not many and they're still at the top end of the market one or two guitars and the the PA1 series is one of them where the inbuilt electronics are starting to get close to the point where you'd sort of sort of go, well, we're not a million miles away. Now. Oh man, they sound absolutely stunning. Yeah. You could go straight into a laptop. Mm -hmm. At the last NAMM show, they created four models, uh, an orchestra model, mm -hmm. a D18, I told you about yeah, this, the HD28 it, yeah. Yeah. and a D45, really beautiful with aging tone, with the fast neck, I mean, yeah. gorgeous new, Martin guitars, rosewood, spruce, everything you want, blah, blah, blah. And what they did, because they can, they have the oldest model of all those. Because right. we invented them. They took the oldest D45, which we had to pay $270,000 for, to have in the museum five years ago. The oldest D18, the oldest orchestra model, the oldest HD28. Took it into the studio and recorded them. And they're on those models. Oh, well, like a modeling type. It's thing. in the image. An image. A, a model, yeah. You see what? Like kind what, of a line sixy variant. No, no because like what that. happens with that? It's a generic thing. Mm -hmm. This is not. This is very specific. It's our vintage donor sounds, <laughs> our guitar in that model. So you can only get it on that. It's called a retro series. It's, okay. Hubba, hubba, hubba. I'll have to check those out. Whoa. So anyway, we're going to talk about the neck joint because that, that's kind of critical. It is critical, and it, and it's in a way, if we you know if we go there, it's it, you know we know that if if you, if you like American built acoustic guitars, you know there's um, Martin, a fabulous maker, and and obviously there's Taylor that make a lot of guitars out in America as well, and they've been very successful and popular. But but their neck join is is um, that was one of the things they really radically changed, wasn't it, about the way acoustics perhaps have traditionally been made. And I love the argument of kind of you know, is it better to do it how it's always been done? Is it better to sort of change it? So get you know you get I, your I pitch, think your pitch have, the Martin kind I of. I have to tell joint. you, I, I, better is is such a wrong term because. When it comes to sound and when it comes to the voice of a guitar, there is no better. If there's one best guitar in the world, there'd be one yeah. guitar in your shop. Yeah. Um, what difference what difference there are between all these guitars is the sound and the tone. Mm -hmm. And if the tone of a Martin guitar inspires you the way it's inspired me my whole life and why you wanted to buy one for your 40th birthday mm -hmm. and you own a music store and you can buy any guitar you want and you chose us, that's a tremendous compliment. The predominant reason, I said this before, the way you brace the top, the finish, which is critical as well, and we should talk about mm -hmm. that, but of course the way you attach the neck to the body. The first aspect is Martin hand carves the neck um, out of, in this case, in the case of your guitar, mm -hmm. it's genuine South American mahogany. In the case of that orchestra model, it's genuine South American mahogany. Hand carved, one piece neck. Mm -hmm. The oh, so there's no, the headstock's not on a, no. a joint, this, it's um, a one piece. This is interesting, this is called a volute. Yeah. It's not on every Martin guitar, it's a hand carving, and it's ornamental, has no structural significance. It's there precisely because what you're intimating. In, back in the day, in the 1800s, a headstock was connected to the neck mm -hmm. with a dovetail joint. So that's just an ornamental carving. Okay. We connect the body to the neck with the dovetail joint. Very difficult to do a dovetail joint, but that's not why it's one of the most expensive features on a Martin guitar. It's expensive for us to do and special because we pre-fit them early on in the process. This guitar takes about three months to make. Okay? It's insane. I know. When we make the body, okay, we make, you know, we bend the sides, we put a block here, a block here, the top, the back, we wrap it up with cloth tape, when we finish that, it's about a month into the process. The inside of the body is finished. The outside is completely raw wood, completely raw wood. And at this point, the neck is carved for that body. And we okay. pre-fit them in the rough. It doesn't have anything of this on it. It's just a rough piece of mahogany that's just been carved by a craftsperson for about 20, 20 minutes. 
It's a perfect neck shape. We check it, perfect fit. And then they separated for a period of about two months because we, we finish them separately. They do not see each other until final assembly. That's like, wow. That's why it's called final assembly. She's always waiting for him or vice versa. There's no divorce court, you know? This is what we're very proud of, but it is a very arduous commitment mm -hmm. because they never arrive at that final assembly the same day. That's what's so mystical, magical about final assembly and a Martin dovetail and very expensive. Yeah. Again, going back to the standard series, there's that finish. That's a nitrocellulose lacquer finish, same as that orchestra yeah. model. The finish takes us three weeks to do. Yeah. Okay. No, I mean, nitrocellulose, I, I get, again, I've got a, a friend of mine, a guy called Rob Chapman, we shoot lots and lots of gear review videos and um, get thousands and thousands of comments. And it always, always annoys me because a lot of people comment when we're talking about can you hear the difference because the, there's a different lacquer on this fretboard? Or can you hear the difference because it's cut? And we're going, yeah. And we get thousands of comments. It's like, you can't hear that difference. You know, it's like, it's all about the pickups that are in there or it's all about, and you go, it's not, it's, it's Listen, everything. Here's the thing. Wood has pores. It's alive. Yeah. Okay. Now, if you have a wood floor, you need to put polyurethane on it because, you know, when Lola walks around and takes a leak, you know, you're going to have to that, right? Now, if you do that to a guitar top, you're going to be in, in deep doo-doo because the, the top is going to be frozen. Remember mm. that an instrument needs to vibrate wildly to create sound. Mm -hmm. And the more it vibrates, the actually, the more it will improve in tone. Nitrocellulose lacquer is porous because it's porous. It allows the wood to breathe and vibrate, which is why that guitar, you think it sounds great? Mm. It's newly, that's the worst it's ever going to sound. When it catches up to yours, which it never will because you'll always be 40 years ahead. Yes. Next year that guitar is going to sound like a monster. And it sounds, I mean, this is the worst it's going to sound. This is the worst your guitar is going to sound. It's okay. constantly improving. Nitrocellulose lacquer is horrendous to work with. Yes. It's like golden syrup. It's 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 horrible. And it's, and it's, is it sticky. layered? It's like it's kind of do one layer, then another layer, then another layer. We, and... It comes into the spray room, a robot. Now we have a robotic enclosed <laughs> spray room because it's so difficult to work with. Yeah. And the robot, a Spielberg thing, that's a, a new improvement for us. What will spray the, the lacquer on, it'll dry completely and then it is hand sanded. Yeah comes back around. There's about seven or eight coats of lacquer on these things. I think but, people don't realize that, don't they? Because I, I know Gibson use a similar uh, cellulose lacquering on their guitars. And you can get a Gibson Les Paul for 2,000 pounds. And then Gibson will say, and we'll sell you the same Les Paul with no light to cellulose on it for 25% less. Mm -hmm. And people go, wow, that's an incredible value. You go, but yeah, because that's how labor intensive it actually is to put nitrocellulose on. And you know, mm. the, the irony is it looks like this thick finish. It's like mm. twice the thickness of a hair. I met a, 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 a scientist in Denmark who told me that over time, nitrocellulose lacquer evaporates. That in essence, what you have with an old guitar, and you can see it on your guitar. Yeah. It's not as shiny as that. No. And look how it's gotten Sunk honey in, colored. It? Mm. it oxidizes. It's a really live finish. It is a beautiful, and that's my favorite. Uh, you know, when you look at, um, I understand why Fender changed from using a nitrocellulose to polyurethane, you know, because it was so much cheaper to work mm. with. But you see an old nitrocellulose Fender and you compare it to say an old, I'm um, obviously, the polyurethane fenders won't be quite as old, but you know, you look at say a 30 year old strap with a polyurethane finish versus say a 40 year old strap with nitrocellulose and just the prettiness of the aging, if that is such a word, you know, is so much nicer on the nitrocellulose finish. But it, that being said, you have a guitar here that's very affordable. Mm. And you look at that, the good news is that this is also nitro, but it's a satin version. Really? Yes. Yeah. All Martin guitars, with a solid spruce top and the mahogany tops are nitro as well. If it's satin, it's a satin formulation of nitrocellulose. Now, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's a it, it's a great win-win because it's a it, it's a copolymer application. So two sprays go on at one time. It dries in half the time. It dries very light, but it's still porous. 
still oh, allows cool. it. You might come across just when we were talking of you know Jamie's guitar. Yeah, he's yeah. got a D fifteen, and you know over here it's a gloss finish because of his. <laughs> you know that's the only difference is that you know nitro is the lacquer is just the really gloss intensive, whereas the satin finish is much lighter, and but still porous, still allows the wood to. Vibrant. Is there anyone in the world that knows more about Martin guitars than you? Or are you just physically the embodiment of a Martin encyclopedia? I am grasshopper to C.F. Martin IV. <laughs> I learned everything I know from, from Chris. I traveled with Chris on the road for about 15 years. and we would, mm. Not constantly, a couple, couple of weeks a year. And when we would do a clinic, Paul, you, I would be like in the front row, hanging on every word. Um, mm. To me, you know, I, I'm a... I'm a, such a fan. I have n not found a better songwriting tool mm. than a Martin guitar. I think this gives massive, you know, I think it gives me and the sales guys and the customers massive confidence when we actually get to meet. Because I think, you know, guitar business nowadays is a big business. You know, I, I, you know mm. a company like Martin will turn over millions and millions of pounds of dollars and it'll need guys in marketing and it'll need guys in HR mm. and it'll need the finance guys and they're all, you know, but actually to go back and meet the guy mm. or the girl who mm. goes underneath it all i mm. still know my stuff mm. you know i really 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 know why why do we build guitars like this how you do know, we develop new at models? martin they say they take a tone and build a box around it it, <laughs> it just comes down to the people and the materials you know and um they're very proud of what they do mm. lee if it has that name on it mm. you can be sure of two things tone and it's going to last longer. Than this guitar mm. doesn't have a dovetail joint. Right. Because that was one of the other... Remember those three important things. Mm -hmm. Well, if you want to make a more affordable guitar, and we didn't make anything other than the standard mm -hmm. models until 1993. That was the first yeah. time we ever did anything with laminate woods. We had to revisit bracing, mm -hmm. neck to body, and finish. So the finish we, we solved with the satin formulation. Yeah. Um, the bracing we solved by patenting A-frame, which, you know, we didn't patent X bracing in 1850. Should have done. Yeah. Well, it would have run out anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's but, true. Um, but this was the innovation, very, very clever, you know? Mm. Very, wow, that's a lot lighter. Yeah. Um, a lot less wood by taking the bridge plate, taking it at an angle, bordering it with the tone bar, creating a very firm box, no tone bars, great. But this was the innovation because this created... Um, a kind of a Lego opportunity. Because the problem with the dovetail is not inherently all that chiseling and gluing. The problem with the dovetail for cost is the prefit nature, mm -hmm. one neck, one body. When we made the D1 in 1993, what we needed to do was find a universal fit for the neck and yeah. the body that would integrate like a dovetail, but when the D1 was ready, we could go with any neck. Yeah. And this was, if you can see, like the kind of Lego opportunity of mortise and tenon right here. Right. So that was really, that was the key. So what do you call that kind of joint? Mortise and tenon. Right. And you can see it. So that's it's, on that it's still a, it's still a, a glued in style. Neck. Glued in and chiseled. And yeah. actually, we're starting to now make this cut. Um, and this is something they patented as well. And this is a, a recent innovation. Starting to make this cut flare out here. So. So it's a better fit. It's, it's we call it a simple dovetail. Yeah. I mean, I I have to say, you know, I. I'm, I'm excited about all the things we're doing to deliver great sounding guitars at every price range mm. with every kind of sound. You know, you want a small body, you want a big body, you want electronics, you want plain, you want traditional, but you want tone and you mm. want that tone to improve and you want to be able to give it to your grandchildren and make no mistake, our guitars hold their value better than any other acoustic guitar in the market. Yep. I would agree with you know, that. It's, yeah. it's, it's exciting, mm. you know? And, and as I said to Paul, I'm excited when pl anybody plays any kind of acoustic guitar, you know? Um, it's exciting. It's beautiful, you know? New York City, city that was attacked. That's a nice thing that people still love to play the acoustic guitar, you know mm. what I'm saying? Mm. Um, I love the sound of a Martin guitar. To me, it's... Uh, it's I think it's... I, like, I, love, I love the fact that, that, you know, as I said, the, the root of it all is... Just play guitar, play music, make write songs, sing, play guitar, and if the Martin's the right one for you, happy days. And if it's not, still happy days. 
as long as you're playing guitar. Yeah. You know, and that's that's cool. But I, it's it's it kind of like the ukulele. When mm. you stick with it, you graduate to wanting better and better tone and better and better playability. So you know, if you have a GLO. You you will aspire. If I'm gonna start my own guitar, guitar brand called GLO. I no, think, just, don't do it. <laughs> and make really good ones. Guitar shape. <laughs> I'll tell you something. I'll tell you something I find very interesting, Lee, because um, you like cars, don't you? I quite like cars. Yes. All right. It's interesting when you buy a new car. Not that I've ever bought a new car, but when you buy a new car, the car manufacturer will always recommend the tire. There'll always be the tire that you yep. should have on that car. So that car performs admirably, fantastically to its maximum. Strings are not unlike that. You know, in 1970, Martin bought a string company called the Darko String Company mm -hmm. and went on a really committed path to making great strings for their guitars. So, you know, we are really also very committed to making fantastic guitar strings. So the lifespan strings... Those, you know, they're they're treated by clear tone mm -hmm. for long life. They don't flake, mm -hmm. they don't feel weird, um, and they really have a tremendous brightness that has longevity. Mm -hmm. So, well, you're a big fan of coated strings, mm -hmm. aren't you? You've been using them for a long time. I mean, it's just because of my sweat. I've got very acidic sweat. Because he eats so a chili you... burger and he's not to play that. And I just want to say what a thrill it is for me to be to be in a store like yours because you're not moving boxes, you're selling instruments. And I want to just encourage anybody who's really thinking about buying mm -hmm. a guitar to come in. This guy. Yeah. This guy is like, you know, I think he and I could talk about guitars a little no, bit. No, yeah. I've been, I mean, we've been... scheduled a pub after. We have been... a few hours talking about guitars. Yeah, I've been... We have been really, really blessed over... Actually, for as long as I've been involved, really, with Andertons in that... Every time I get a vacancy, put a sign in the window, I get to meet guys that are just super enthusiastic about guitars. Yeah. And you know, hopefully we, you know, we employ the right ones and they come through and they get a little bit of training from people like yourself about. But the enthusiasm is what's always there, and all they want to do is help you find the best guitar for you. You know, and there's, uh, you know, we don't, we don't incentivize them to sell you the most expensive guitar or anything like that. It's just all about just find the right guitar. I always say you don't choose the guitar, the guitar chooses you. Maybe. So if yeah. you can go into a store that has, you know, and your stock is has nice, you know, it's clean, beautiful acoustics in that room, and the strings are don't have a beard on them, you know. <laughs> so it's really great. So thank you. I want to that's well, that's the best way to close is to encourage yes. You people to go into Anderton's and check it out. Well, thank you as well for coming over. It's pleasure. been an absolute pleasure. So, Mind. this is us from my guitar room saying goodbye. Ciao for now. Ciao. <laughs>